Welcome to introduction on BJT frequency response. In this video, we are going to have a look at the frequency response of a BJT amplifier, then have a look at the cutoff frequencies, and then some of the models that we are going to use in later videos. Okay. If you've been following the series on the amplifier design and the analysis, you'd have noticed whenever we did a AC analysis, we got a boat plot looking like this of a mid-band gain where we checked our gain and then some falling off here on the edges. Right, so every amplifier has a lower cutoff frequency and the capacitors that we insert externally um, as bypass and as coupling capacitors as this low cutoff effect and then later on we are going to have a look at the higher cutoff and the transistor is mostly responsible for that so analysis and design for the lower frequency goes hand in hand and then the higher frequency is mostly design, uh, sorry, mostly analysis, and the design for this is, is quite um, easy when the analysis is done. Um, same with a lower frequency. And we are also going to have a look at the mid band gain of amplifier, and that is very similar to the total gain of amplifier, just we include all the high frequency model. Um, properties as well. So that little bit of difference that you have in a amplifier analysis from the actual uh, from the calculated value and the simulated value um, is made up because of this analysis right here. So there's some external things or internal to a transistor that that's going to have an influence. So the lower cutoff frequency, we are going to have a look at capacitors with series resistances. For higher frequency, we are going to look for parallel resistances. And the mid-band gain is including all the loading effects in amplifier. Um, something that you probably noticed is that the AC analysis gives you a boat plot, which is log log um, scale. So let's let's move on, and I'm going to start off with a small example, and I'm going to model the output of either a common emitter or common base amplifier as a voltage source, and our collector resistor as our output impedance connected to a load and this is a high frequency capacitor and this is a low frequency capacitor just like we would have at the output of an amplifier like this. Now for the lower frequencies we look for capacitors with series resistors. Okay and they are basically high pass capacitors. So the lower frequency, this is a low, uh, a high pass filter effect at the lower frequency and a low pass filtering effect at the higher frequency. So here we are looking for a high pass filter effect. So this capacitor here matches how a high pass capacitor would be inserted in a circuit. Only frequencies can jump over this higher frequencies and lower frequencies will not pass. And the low frequency capacitor or the high pass, no, low pass, confuse myself here for a moment, is when frequencies would rather pass through this capacitor here than through the load. So the higher frequencies get here they would rather go to ground than be over 
the load here. So this is low pass effect, that is high pass effect. But this is if low and this is if high. Okay, mostly responsible for. Okay, so this capacitor is a high pass capacitor and this is a low pass capacitor. Now, we keep the capacitor that we want to analyze in our circuit. And low pass capacitors, we make open circuits. Okay, so we get rid of this capacitor right here. Now, what does this capacitor see? We are looking for series resistors. So it sees the 4.7K and it sees the 10K. That is an open circuit, so it's not there. So we are looking at RL plus RC is 14.7K. And if we insert this into the 1 over 2 pi RC equation, that typically calculates a minus 3 decibel point, we get 108 hertz as our lower frequency. Okay, so this over here will be sitting at 108 hertz. High pass effect. Right. So, that is the first step. For the high frequency, we are looking for capacitors in parallel. Low pass capacitors remains in the circuit, so our uh, CL remains, and any high pass capacitors becomes short circuits. Okay, so we make that a short, temporarily get rid of this um, AC source here, so we make that a short, and what is this capacitor seeing? It is seeing RC in parallel with our load. Gives us 3.2 kilo ohms. Plug that into this equation, we get 22.6 kilohertz. Right. So we'll we'll check this momentarily in a in a in a simulation. Next up is what happens with this source right here towards the output? So this is kind of what happens with our mid gain, mid band gain as well. Since we have a loading effect, the loading effect is also part of mid band gain. So if we check the mid band gain in inverted commas for this little circuit, we want V out over Vs. And the way we get that is when this capacitor is a short circuit and this capacitor is an open circuit. Basically the ideal case of both and how we looked at a circuit when we analyzed it um, to get the AC parameters. And now we will just have a voltage divider of R load over R load plus RC. And if we take the log of that, the 20 log, I put it in dBs, we get the minus 3.35 decibel drop at the output. Okay, so let's check this out in a simulation quickly. And that is how we're going to look at all our capacitors in um, circuits when we're analyzing our PJT amplifiers for wave frequency responses. So we want when we want to check the low frequency capacitors, all the high frequency capacitors become open circuits. So we just ignore them. And we check what impedance each capacitor is seeing. Same with our high frequency capacitors. We make all our low frequency caps short and we check what each capacitor is seeing in parallel. Okay, so let's verify this results that I got here in a simulation. So this should be 108, this should be 22.6, and this line over here should be minus 3.35 decibels, making these points, if we measure it, minus 6.35 decibels. Uh, 
So let's hop over into the simulator quickly and verify our results. Right, here is our simulator and let's run it. Get our boat plot. Bring up our cursor and the mid band in inverted commas here is minus 3.5 roughly decibels. So let's check out minus 6.5. Minus 6.5 is at 105 hertz, so that is very close to the 108. And the minus 6.5 on this side gives us 23 kilohertz, and that is very close to the 22.6 that we had in our calculation. Okay, so we can treat high pass and low pass separately and kind of come up with the same result when we do simulations and real life. Okay, let's have a look at the models that we will be working with before we conclude the video. Right, so we have a model for the low frequency for a transistor, so we are going to be ignoring R out just have our pi in it and this is basically how we treated the model when we were doing designs okay and when we're doing low frequency all the high pass capacitors remains all the low pass capacitors becomes open circuits and we replace our bjt with a low frequency model okay this being our low frequency model this is our BJT amplifier, so we're looking at the common emitter amplifier, and in this CC1, CC2, and CE is our high pass capacitor, and C load is a low pass capacitor. Okay, so these, these three will be responsible for our lower frequency. Now if we replace this transistor with a model, we are going to keep these three caps and that one is going to become an open circuit. So our amplifier low frequency model will look like this. Right. So if we are going to determine the lower cutoff frequency, we are going to treat each one of these capacitors separately. So if we want to see the impedance seen by our emitter capacitor, we are going to make that a short circuit and that a short circuit. Obviously this cap is not going to be seeing in that direction, but we will be seeing into the transistor in this direction. And always remember that if we cross that point from this side, we divide by beta plus 1, and in the other direction, we multiply with beta plus 1. So if you just remember these three rules over here, when crossing this point, you multiply or divide, and we don't see that direction, it will be fairly easy to calculate um, or get the equations for each one of these, and that will be in our next uh, video. Right. Great, looking at the high frequency model. We will look at this in more detail when we do high frequency, but our transistor model for high frequency has a couple of extra parameters that should be unknown to you at this point. R out is known, we use that in our analysis already because it has influence on our output impedance and our gain. So we will be including this in our high frequency model. We also need this when we are doing our mid-band gain in any case. Then a little Rx has joined our model and this is the resistance of the base materials. And then we have C pi and C mu 
additional here. So this is our base emitter input capacitance, and this is our base collector capacitance. So we will be looking at methods how to calculate these from SPICE models and then how to implement them in finding our higher frequency of our amplifier before designing um, a specific frequency. Okay, so all high pass capacitors will become shorts, all low pass capacitors will remain. So these are low pass capacitors and C load is also a low pass capacitor. So these will become short circuits. C load remains and we just replace our transistor with this monstrosity over here. And our circuit will end up to look something like this. So this resistor has been bypassed. And that is what our high frequency model will look like. And we will inspect each one of these capacitors separately. Um, so yeah, there's going to be different techniques how to do this. And we will be looking at them. And we will be looking at open circuit time constant and Miller's theorem. How to deal with this capacitor right here. Because this one is a tricky one. C pi and C load is easy, but C mu is typically the problematic capacitor in our problems. Okay, and we also, I left a voltage source in this one. We will also calculate the mid band gain from this model. So we want Vs to be out from here because this model includes Rx. So we're going to have a bit of a drop over this resistor and include it includes R out of our transistor so that we can deal with the actual losses that's additional on the output. And that is the rough introduction to PJT frequency response. So in the next video, we will deal with the low frequency and then in a couple of videos after that with the high frequency. Thank you for watching.